Hello everyone and welcome to Divine Debut. This is Kathy speaking. Thank you so much for being here. This is your Venus retrograde special. And when I what I mean by special is I will be talking about each and every zodiac sign and where they will be affected in which area of life they will be having Venus retrograding. Um, thank you so much for all that you do for my channel and this is the astrology section for Venus retrograde. So for those of you that are hungry for astrology this is the video for you. I will also be posting a video with the tarot for each individual zodiac sign on the Venus retrograde and how the tarot speaks to you and your own personal story. All right everyone so Venus is retrograding through the sign of Gemini. Gemini, what is Gemini all about? Gemini is all about communication. It's all about business. It is the natural house, the natural third house in the zodiac sign. So I will be talking to you, um, as I said, depending on what star sign you are. So what sun sign you are and as well as your rising sign. So for those of you that are familiar with your charts and you know what your rising sign is, then this will speak to you as well. So listen for your rising sign as well. Um, let's first of all though speak about Gemini and the way Gemini comes across. We know that Gemini um, being the third house in the zodiac sign and let's take the first sign, it is Aries, right? So then we go Taurus, Gemini, it is house number three. So just looking at the soul, let's say it starts from Aries. Aries is that seed. Uh, second house of Taurus, it's all about self-worth. Taurus is also the earth, so it starts to, uh, that seed starts to sprout. Gemini is the youth. It's some very youthful and playful energy um, and Gemini is the twins so it can be quite nervous as um, Gemini is ruled by Mercury and Mercury is the nervous system um, and therefore we know that Gemin Gemini can be a little bit jittery, they can be very jumpy, they're not someone to sit and you know wait for things, they take action, it's an air sign and not only that because it's very youthful as well and it's very communicative, Gemini is all about multitasking, the twins, they multitask, if you know Gemini people they could be doing 10 things at once and they are ruled by the left brain which is Mercury right here as you can see. Now Mercury in the sign of Gemini is very strong and Mercury is all about and when we talk about Mercury it's obviously we're talking about Gemini as well so Mercury the communicator, the writer, the talker, the person who will um, instigate conversation. We know also that Mercury is because it's all about electronics and things that are mobile, so uh, a mobile phone, anything to do with telecommunications, internet. Third house is also about collaboration, it's siblings, neighbours, okay, so it's also the student. We usually see in the tarot, we usually see that uh, page of swords as the communicator, the messenger, Mercury is the messenger and that's why Gemini likes to be in conversation with many people. Um, they tend to have a lot of friends, Gemini people, and they're always busy, always on the go. And as I said, it's also about motion, so anything to do with vehicles, anything that is mobile. That's what Gemini is. And Gemini is also a mutable sign. Um, mutable means they like to change, they're not fixed. Okay, so mutable signs um, adapt very easily to changes. They enjoy changes 
and therefore they're not very stable. They're from here, there, and everywhere. And I'm going to say Gemini is not patient. It's one of, it's not one of their virtues. So they need a lot of patience, and of course, it's all about the mind, the intellect, just the way you know. Think of the the brain, our brain cells, the nerves in our brain, and how quickly they work because the higher octave of Mercury is Uranus, right? So that's what Gemini is all about. And Venus, the goddess of love, money, and pleasure and beauty and art and anything that we indulge in, as well as romance. Um, I've put the chart here, as you can see, at zero of Aries. It's not the 13th of May today, but this is the day that Venus retrograded. I am doing this video on the 23rd of May, 2020. So, so we can have zero degrees of Aries here. I, to make it simpler for those of you that are uh, beginning astrology, this will help you understand where Venus is roughly and what she will be doing. So Venus started to retrograde on the 13th of May of 2020 at 21 degrees as you can see here so mutable Gemini a very um, interesting area for Venus to be retrograding um, and I will tell you in why in a minute we do have Venus right here at 21 degrees and 50 minutes she will she will retrograde back up until five degrees so she comes up this way goes to five degrees okay that's where her shadow phase started so let's say she started at about five degrees she went direct and stopped stationed to go retrograde and she has been retrograding she is now at 19 degrees roughly Okay, and she will be moving direct. Once she hits the five degree mark here, she will start to move direct at the 25th of June. 25th of June, she moves direct, but she will be transiting through the sign of Gemini up until the 7th of August. Yes, that's how long she will be. Um, transiting through Gemini so that's a few months now I was saying why she will you know why it's so interesting that she's retrograding here because she does reference back to another retrograde cycle back in 2012 and in 20 I should say 2004 both those times Venus retrograded in the sign of Gemini if you notice, that's eight years apart. Every eight years, Venus does something. Um, she does retrograde every 18 months, but every eight years, she does something very different. And it's very progressive um, learning on what Venus does and how she retrogrades. That is for people who are progressed in the knowledge of astrology. But I'm just referencing that so you could look and see in your own personal life what was going on for you again in the same area of Gemini at the same roughly degrees she only moves very you know just a few degrees up or down every eight years so she is retrograding now in Gemini in the next eight years after eight years she won't be retrograding again in the sign of Gemini so that is very in, very important to know. Think back to what was going on in your own personal life back then. This could give you an idea. Now I was talking about mutable Gemini. The mutable cross. So what is opposite Gemini? It is Sagittarius, okay, which is the ninth house. Sagittarius is also mutable. Um, and to form a cross, we have Pisces, and Virgo so these are the four mutable energies which like to change they they enjoy that okay so for those of you that are familiar 
with your charts? Do you have anything in Gemini? Do you have anything in Sagittarius? Anything in Pisces or in Virgo? Okay, and whatever, if you do have, we know that the distance, let's say, from Gemini to, you know, to Virgo and then to Sagittarius, if you look at the chart as having there's a cross in here, the cross, right, if the whole uh, zodiac wheel is 360 degrees, divide that into four, that's a square is 90 degrees, so four nines are 36. So a square in astrology, the term square is very, it's, it asks for change, it's difficult. Okay, and when we have squares, that is like turning a left corner. Um, it could be difficult, but it does bring positive things, necessary changes to you. Okay, let's see Venus. Venus, I've already mentioned what she's all about. Venus can mean money. It can mean anything to do with harmony. She, she does rule the sign of Taurus as well as the sign of Libra. Okay, Libra is all about harmony and balance and relationships. Taurus is all about, this is the money house. It's also the house of self-worth, values, comforts, pleasures, those five senses. Okay, and, um, you know, what what is mine? You know, what do I own? Taurus is all about that. So, in that sense, Venus in Taurus would be more about the pleasures of life, right? The things that we have, the good food, the good um, clothing, the fine materials, the fine perfumes, all those are um, Venus in Taurus. Libra, on the other hand, is all about balance, harmony, relationships, um, being, you know, being balanced with others. Libra is partnerships, it's others, it's also the partnership house, okay? So that's what Libra is all about. And of course, Libra is all about being balanced, where communication, where thought process is concerned. We know that Libran people are very democratic, so they always um, become the instigator of peace and balance. Um, that's why they make very good... Um, uh, social workers, I would say, you know, marriage counselors and things like that. Anyway, so what do you have in Gemini? Are you familiar with your chart? That is the question here. So, Venus transiting through Gemini for all those months, this is going to bring back things of the past, okay? Things to do with the past, relationships, um, situations, money things, projects. Venus can be a project. Okay, so um, Venus is also an expression of love, okay? How, we, how you want to live your life. Um, what type of a person are you attracted to? It's also about the physical beauty, isn't it? For instance, for those of you that have got Venus on your rising, uh, and Venus can also be the voice because um, Taurus is the neck. So those people who have got a lovely voice, they, they love to sing, they could have strong Venus um, close to their sun or um, maybe on their rising or in a, you know, either in Taurus or in Libra. That's just an example, right? So Venus personifies love. Um, creativity as well, anything to do with beauty as well as partnerships, but also finances because Venus rules Taurus. Okay, so, okay, when Venus turns retrograde, um, things come to the surface, as I said, people, situations and um, happenings of the past come to the surface to re-evaluate. When we're dealing with a retrograde planet, it's we're not moving forward. You know, Venus retrograding is an illusion. It's usually, if you look at it from Earth, um, the way it's um, orbiting, the view from Earth makes it look as though it's moving backwards. 
okay? But it's only an illusion. Nevertheless, going backwards is like, think about it, it's like bringing the energy inwards. So going within, not moving forward, but mainly dealing with what is around us, what we've been dealing with already. That's what retrogrades are, and that's the positivity with retrograde planets, is that we're given a chance to redo, re-look at, revamp. Um, you know, it's like putting all your cards up on the table and saying, this is what we've got to work with. Let's do this. Okay, now, what is not good to do whilst Venus is retrograding? First of all, it can bring up, as I said, nostalgia of the past. It can also bring uncertainty with money. Um, and I want to say also, especially for those of you that are single, be careful if you meet someone on Venus retrograding season. Why? You, if you do, I'm not saying don't go out, don't mingle. What you need to do is take it slowly. Um, don't you know, don't rush into anything, obviously, okay? Um, don't set that wedding date for those of you that are committed, okay? Um, it, for those of you who want to propose, don't do that. It's not the right time. And also, because, you know, once Venus turns direct, you may change your mind, okay? We're not thinking straight, whilst Venus is retrograde. Retrograde Venus is not starting anything new where love, money, um, surgery, cosmetic surgery, tattoos, new hairstyles, drastic hair changes, um, any piercings, anything like that. Do not start it whilst Venus is retrograding. Um, try to, um, you know, keep that until Venus goes direct, if you need to have cosmetic surgery, wait until Venus turns direct. Now, if you've already, if you've got an appointment that you can't change, well, life goes on. And, and you know, even purchases, like major purchases, make sure you don't make major purchases while Venus is retrograding, as you may regret it. And the interesting thing is that in June, Mercury will also be retrograding. So I would wait. I would hold off for things like that until um, after July if you can. Okay. Now, what else did I want to tell you? Okay. I will be going... I will be going um, through each individual sign and telling you which area of life that will be. That's where chances, you know, have getting a second chance maybe to make up. For those of you that, are, that have broken up or someone has ghosted you and, you know, they haven't been communicating, this is the time when they may show up, okay? Um, also, I'm going to say if you can hold off breaking off with your partner, do that as well. Wait until Venus goes direct, okay, because nothing is certain, okay. Don't make major decisions um, whilst Venus is retrograding, please, because you'll regret it, okay. Um, and be careful also with investments. Don't try to uh, not to sign any contracts or even trying to... Um, Venus retrograding is a good time to fix things, things that have been broken, whether this is mechanical things or, you know, it's a time for fixing things, not starting things, okay? So, all right, if I've missed anything, I will come back to it. Let's start off with Aries. As you could see, Aries is right here, so um, Sun in Aries and... Um, Aries rising as well. Obviously, Venus is in your third house. Now, third house, as I was explaining before, is the house of Gemini. It's all about communication. It's all about learning because Gemini is also the uh, student. 
So it's it's we're ready to collaborate. Third house is the communicator. It's willing to do the work, but it's also dealing with people that are around our neighborhood, also siblings. Um, again, Venus retrograding in third in the third house could also mean um, your car breaks down, for instance. Okay, your car breaks down, or you've um, severed ties, or you've had a a misunderstanding with a sibling. This could be the time that you could fix things. Okay, it's the time to communicate. Now, Taurus, Taurus, and Taurus rising, obviously. Um, for you, this is your second house, the second house of values, self-worth. Second house is also, it's for you, it's your money house. So having Venus retrograding in your second house could mean that money that was owed to you is coming to you or um, things to do with your comforts, also the five senses. Okay, you may have lost um, your taste, let's say, in food, in a certain uh, taste that could be coming back. Lots of, there's so many things with the five senses that I could talk about. We know that the five senses are, of course, hearing, speaking, um, tasting, seeing, and touching. So, all those five senses are incorporated in the second house. Second house is also, as I said, the money house. So money, yes, could be coming in really well. But I'm I'm going to say that, of course, the money will probably, it won't come in whilst Venus is retrograding, but you could be having those conversations. So when once Venus turns direct on the 25th of June, that's when the money will be coming in. And I just wanted to say also that because um, we've also got the North Node in the sign of Gemini, North Node is very fated. So once, once Venus turns direct after the 25th of June and she comes closer to the North Node, it's a very fated time for love, everyone. So... Okay, so Taurus, that will be a very interesting time for you. All right, now Gemini, Gemini and Gemini rising. Obviously, this is your first house. First house is usually the way we come across to people. It's the physical body. It's, um, it's all about how you're seen out in the world. Okay, so it's also the ego. First house is... Um, the physical body as well as the ego. So having Venus in your first house and for especially, you know, with Gemini rising, um, this is a beautiful time. You you are going to be looking very beautiful as Venus will be blessing you with harmonious looks, but also that could be, of course, money coming in, right? So very good time. Very good time for fixing those um, those relationships with others, of course. Okay, so now Cancer, um, 12th house. 12th house for you, dear Cancer, is, as you can see here, is Cancer, so the 12th house here. 12th house is all about endings, but it's also the hidden house, things that you cannot see. Things that are behind you, behind your head, you can't, cannot see them because you cannot turn your head 360 degrees. So it's something wonderful is coming in that you don't know that it is coming. Also, 12th house could be, um, it's the house of magic. It's also the house of, um, it's naturally ruled, let's say, by Neptune. So for those of you that have had disillusion, you know, some sort of a, lack of clarity about things to do with love, money, values, etc. 
that uh, could be prominent for you. But also I'm going to say that the 12th house is also lovers, secret lovers. So some of you may be in a clandestine relationship or this could even be a past hidden lover, secret lover that is coming back to the surface for you. Okay, so also I'm going to say uh, the house, the 12th house is the house of magic. So um, magic that you don't know is happening. It's also the house of unconditional love. So that will be very interesting that something beautiful is coming in that, and you don't know about it, dear Cancer. It could be a surprise to you. All right, let's look at the house of Leo. Dear Leo people, in the 11th house for you, that's where um, Venus will be retrograding. So 11th house is the house of um, groups and associations. It's the house of wishes and dreams. It's the house of the future. And it's also um, the house of the humanitarian. Okay. But it also rules um, money coming through from career because the 10th house is the house of career and the 11th house is the income that comes after work. Now Virgo and Virgo rising, um, Venus will be retrograding in your 10th house. 10th house is the house of status. So how are you seen out in the world? Are you single? Are you dating? Are you married? But it's also the house of career. It's also um, a house of, um, you know, it's connected to the midheaven. Um, so it's our highest ideals. It's what we're aiming for. It's our goals, dear Virgo. So that could mean, of course, anything to do with career and, you know, being... Um, being seen out in the world uh, with what you are working on. So showing it to the world. We know the 10th house is um, the world at large. Okay, 10th house is also the house of um, government. Okay, it's also the house of government and the law. So um, that could be things to do with, you know, the red tape, with... Um, getting the okay for, let's say, getting the okay from the council for wanting to build a home or something like that. So, all right, career is very good. Venus retrograding your career house is wonderful. Okay, Libra and Libra rising. Venus will be retrograding for you in your ninth house. And ninth house is all about long distance. It's flying to a distant country, dealing with foreigners, um, people out there in the world. Ninth house is also the house of the teacher. It's also the house of philosophy, higher education, and also your vision of the world as well as that. It's your vision turning 2020. You're getting um, so intelligent that you see the world through different eyes but also ninth house is uh, our beliefs you know the way we've been raised so our beliefs our structures how we've been raised so um, it's got a lot to do with our conditioning okay so that's the ninth house again the ninth house is the law as well it's all about the truth so there could be some truth coming through, someone's truth coming to you, for instance. Or this could be your chance to um, brush up on your skills where something creative is concerned. You may be wanting to um, further your studies, for instance, okay, and get that degree in something that you wanted to complete. All right, Scorpio and Scorpio Rising. Venus will be retrograding in your 8th house. 8th house is the house of transformation, regeneration. It's the house of sex. It's the house of intimacy, emotional, physical. It's also the money house. As it's Scorpio is right, um, the 8th house, sorry, is the naturally ruled house of Scorpio. And that is the money house as well as the house right opposite, which is Taurus. So just generally... The eighth house is money coming from other sources. So if you've 
um, you've tried to get a loan or you know you've applied for a home loan or something like that this could be you getting that second chance or just tweaking something okay maybe you're wanting um, you're you're needing help with money to buy something that you love something quite expensive this could be the time when that could happen this is your chance all right now Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising in your seventh house Venus will be retrograding so this is love relationships this is partnerships even in work this is you trying to harmonize um, dealings with others and it could be co-workers as well it doesn't have to be only family members or romantic partnerships this could be um, you getting the green light um, if you've let's say you um, you have proposed you know let's move in together or let's get married if someone is thinking about it maybe this could be the time of them changing their mind or just tweaking something so that you could once Venus turns direct you could get the okay yes let's do this so beautiful for you dear Sagittarius now Capricorn and Capricorn rising Venus will be retrograding in your sixth house sixth house is the um, natural house of health but it's also the house of our daily routine our work um, it is also the house of co-workers so if you've been dealing with uh, if you've been working on a project let's say with a co-worker and there were differences or disagreements this could be a time when you can um, talk about it iron out those creases okay sixth house is also the house of health um, I did say health the house of pets okay so those of you that have lost a pet you may be able to find um, find it or maybe replace it with something that is um, as as much as dear I wanted to say as dear as your past pet for instance I want to give you an example um, I um, when I uh, moved overseas to Greece here I had to leave my beautiful Venus my beautiful cat um, in Australia and it was just it was just too hard to bring her with us as she was she's quite she was quite the wild one I could not put her in quarantine for I don't know 36 hours what am I saying maybe a week in quarantine it would have been um, it wouldn't have been good for her health she wouldn't be able to handle it so we had to leave her which um, killed me really because I loved her so much and now I found a little kitten and it's a long story and I'll probably post it and let you know about it and I'll post pictures as well so you could see my little um, Venus replacement even though I can never replace Venus she was one of a kind and each pet of course has got its own character but now I've um, gotten a little kitten that's spitting image she's exactly the same uh, of course different name her name is Psyche so I will be posting about that um, hopefully um, very soon so that's what I'm planning to do so yes about pets that could be something that's happening with you dear Capricorn but again it could also be involving work your daily routine um, yeah so something that you can work on something that you can create maybe at this time which can be really wonderful for you and it is very fated with the north node in Gemini Venus will be moving over the north node once she uh, gets to the 29th degree roughly there so after uh, the end of June for sure something very wonderful and very fated will be coming in for you in your sixth house and relating to the things that I've just mentioned now Aquarius and Aquarius rising for you Venus will be retrograding in house number five now the fifth house is all about creation it's about children it's true love it's romance it's the fun house it's the house of risking it's the house of gambling okay so you could be creating something Venusian which you are working on now and Venus retrograde is very 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 um, good for that 
as it, it gives us a breather, it gives us a moment to be able to fine tune and create something that is harmonious and not off kilter. So that's what could be happening for you, fifth house, the house of children, the house of romance, and also um, the house of the heart. Okay, so beautiful, dear Aquarius. And I want to say it's also the house of romance. So this is, you know, that fluttering when you meet someone, someone new, or if someone comes back from the past where your heart fluttered and you got those little butterflies in your stomach, that's what will be happening for you. So beautiful. Okay, dear Pisces and Pisces rising, Venus will be retrograding in your fourth fourth house. Fourth house is the house of family, it's the house of heritage, um, your lineage, your uh, past as well, your roots, but it's also the house of emotional security, financial security, you know, where you feel secure and you are loved and nurtured. It can also be a physical home, so some of you may be um, looking at a contract to purchase a new home, okay, or something, purchasing something beautiful for your home or even renovating your home. Um, that could be um, things of importance for you as well. Now, the fourth house is also the house of uh, parents, but mostly the mother. So it could be that your mother is um, doing something that could be helping or bringing harmony into your life. She could be loving and nurturing you um, through giving you a gift or something like that, you know. So that is lovely, dear Pisces. Everyone, I think that uh, I've sort of touched on the top of the, the tip of the mountain of, you know, the tip of the ice of what Venus retrograding for you may mean. Um, so there, there are many, many examples that I could give. Now, I do like to work with both astrology and tarot, and I usually put, I usually put the uh, astrology first and then the tarot reading, but they, the videos become too long and I can't do too much tarot as well. So I thought I would split the videos for those of you who love astrology, this is your video. For those of you that are interested in the tarot and what um, that will show for you during this Venus retrograde season, um, please look out for the video that is that should be up on my um, up on my channel. I'll actually put the link at the bottom in the description box below so that you could find it easily as well. Also, everyone, I'd like to let you know that I will be also doing a similar vi video um, on Jupiter retrograde and then obviously with Mercury retrograde. I do hope that you're enjoying these videos. Let me know um, with your comments. Give me a like, uh, subscribe if you're new to my channel. I really do appreciate it. And, you know, that's what Venus retrograde is all about. It's all about... Um, looking within, giving um, love a chance to prosper, to um, iron out those creases and also bring in harmony. So love, giving out love, um, it should also be received. That is very harmonious. So my um, donation, let's say, to you is you know, um, doing these videos, your love is shown through other means and that is by supporting my channel in whichever way you can possibly, even that comment or that like, anything like that is uh, supporting my channel and I want to thank you so much. And I love talking to all of you. I do want to thank you for your comments. I'm open to all opinions. Um, I don't expect all opinions to be positive. Uh, what humbles me is when most of your comments are positive. As I said, I am open also to um, hearing what you liked or what you didn't like. So, you know, that helps me make my channel better. So those comments are appreciated as well. 
All right, everyone, I think I will leave it at that. I want to thank you so much again for all that you do. Just one last little detail about Juno, and here is Juno in the sign of Libra. Juno is the, um, it's the asteroid of commitments, so marriage, moving in together. Venus is more about the first romance, you know, um, getting married, well, the beginning, you know, the promise of marriage, let's say, but Juno is actually uh, having been committed. It's more serious. And I just wanted to say that Juno is about to go direct. It's been retrograde for about four or five months, but it's about to go retrograde, um, sorry, direct on the 25th of March, which is 25th or 26th of March, which is practically when you're going to be receiving this video. So, and it is in the sign of Libra. So that's why partnerships, relationships have been going through a lot. So it's going to be very interesting. Okay. Very, very interesting to see what happens after the 25th, 26th of May, where committed partnerships and relationships are heading. But again, don't stop at that date as Venus again will be moving direct on the 25th of June. Okay, she will be turning direct and it will be very interesting after that. Once she covers those same degrees that she was retrograding on, that's when we should, we should be reaping the rewards of the work we've done on Venus retrograde. Okay, it's all systems go after the 25th of June. All right, everyone, thank you again. Many blessings, much love, and much healing to all of you. For those of you that are hoping for that person, a special person, to call you to reach out, I'm wishing you luck. Okay, don't forget to be compassionate and uh, ready for clearing the slate, leaving the hatred in the past, being able to overcome the obstacles whether it's make or break, you know, just closing that chapter and being humble and happy with it and moving direct. All right, talk to you soon.